I've been surprised how many men have said they can't find a feminine woman. None of us are perfect. I mean, we talk about the ideal woman and it's like, well, we're just saying ideal. We're not saying perfect. But your goal is to, I've got to change him. Don't we all want our men that we love to like being home? But sometimes when these men are being interviewed for these articles, sometimes they're going to say what they think they want, but they don't really realize other things that they want. You know what I mean? Welcome back to the Fascinating Womanhood channel, where we talk about everything that has to do with developing femininity and building strong, long-lasting, loving relationships. I am Cherry Lynn, and I am here with my mom, Dixie Andalyn Forsyth. Hi. Hi. We're talking about the ideal woman, seven qualities that every, not every man, but men man. in general <laughs> want in a woman. So a fun little fact was as we were preparing for this video, we were looking mm -hmm. up at what age do people get married these days? And you wouldn't believe that the average age, I think this was last year, for a man to get married was 33. So that's for men. And then for women, it was 31 years old. Kind of comparing that to the past, in 1970, the average age to marry for a man was 22. And for a woman, just not barely even 21 yet. So what do you think about that? <laughs> Yeah, that was shocking. I'm sure that part of it is birth control pills have made it yeah. easier for women to, to be as casual as men often are. And so people often live together. That was considered really taboo in 1970 to do that. It was scandalous. It isn't so much now. Men are getting uh, husband privileges without mm -hmm. committing to marriage. That's another, another issue. I've been surprised how many men have said they can't find a feminine woman. We live in the United States and embarrassingly for American women, some of these men, and it's been over the years, a dozen of them maybe have said they want to go to somewhere like Central or South America to find somebody because hmm. they're more feminine. Right, more feminine women. There's probably a lot of parts that go into that. But I think one of the reasons why we wanted to bring it up is because when you're talking about things that men want in women, but men are getting married later and women are getting married later, I think you could really peel this onion and figure out well, why one of the reasons why they might be getting married later is because they're not finding their ideal woman. And so that's what we kind of want to talk about today. Now, the ideal woman actually goes really far into Fascinating Woman. Do you want to talk a little bit about the original Fascinating Womanhood written by your mom, my grandma? She had a section in her book that was really, really successful, her book about the divided woman, which was kind of what she called the ideal woman. Do you want to talk a little bit about that and where that Yeah, came? she had a, it was a, a silhouette kind of stylized silhouette of a woman divided in half. It was to make it real simple so you could understand the different sides of a woman. One was more angelic, which involved character and patience and understanding men and things like that. And the other side was what she called human which were qualities like charm and girlishness and things like that. And so it helped to put it all together. She used examples of different women, mostly from literature, great novels like uh, David Copperfield. The author talked about two different women that had different sides of this. That was kind of her way of, like you said, just describing what she thought of as what the ideal woman that men want is this. And it was very simple. Considering that, you know, women feel a lot of pressure on us. It doesn't mean yeah. that men can be bums and women have to be perfect. That is right. it's not what we're talking about at all. But for me and for a lot of people, we like to have goals to set for ourselves. Not that we're ever going to become, we don't live in this on this planet long enough to become perfect or this ideal in a perfect sense. But if I want to look a certain way, like say go on a diet, a lot of women put a picture of their ideal on the fridge. Uh, right. It doesn't mean they're going to look exactly like that model at the end of it, but it's a goal to shoot for. And that's what we're talking about here was the ideal woman. So in your book, the sequel, Fascinating Womanhood for the Timeless Woman, you did not include the divided woman. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? The assumption is that 
the divided woman that was very basic to right. passive womanhood and timeless as we call it we're going further we already have that we're not throwing out that we still have that book we're going deeper into more of these qualities and adding and adding more things to it like understanding the differences between men's and women's brains and understanding the value of being female and boundaries and things like that we're going further with it so we have that so it's, like, it's like going to you're going to college now got it we went through high school okay. with that now we're going to college so. i'm so glad that you explained that because i think a lot of women think well why didn't dixie put this in her book i liked this well that's great that you liked that in the original book. It's it's like why put it in first, twice? Why went do it through twice? the first course? Now we're moving on. And I think in this video we want to talk about the timeless, more advanced kind of discussion about the ideal woman. And that's why we we selected these seven traits that are really important to talk about. And of course, you're going to want to read the book to really get all of this information. But we just wanted to do a video highlighting these seven traits for the ladies that kind of wanted a little bit of extra clarity from us. Cause okay. there's more, there's more traits. There's more. <laughs> yeah, there's more. And it's funny because when you look up research on the internet about what men want in women, it's either really physical stuff. Like you get like this long list of appearance stuff, or you get no appearance stuff and you get all this character stuff. This is a combination of a lot of those things. It's a combination of appearance, character, because we honestly just believe that there's a there's a specific set of qualities out there that women I don't think really value in themselves anymore. And the other thing is you have to think big picture. You're young, I'm old. I can uh, <laughs> I live <laughs> where I I've lived long enough. I think these these ideal qualities have to last you for your life. They're not just when you're in your twenties and thirties. They have to apply when you're exactly. 60, 70, 80. Does it go the distance or is it just like she's really buff and she's all these things and, and is that gonna work when you're 75? I mean Well, really I think you also need to keep in mind that sometimes when these men are being interviewed for these articles, sometimes they're gonna say what they think they want, but they don't really realize other things that they want. You know what I mean? Well, one, one thing we know in fascinating womanhood, men are not as good as women are at verbalizing, particularly right. feelings. So if they're asked what they want, a lot of men will find it difficult to verbalize it. They may say that they're attracted to a woman that is super athletic and into sports, but he may not actually want to marry that girl i don't know i just think you hear you hear them say conflicting things of what they want to what they actually choose and are attracted to and marry and are those men mature so i i don't right. know <laughs> the first one i had to put character the longer i live the more i think a, re a marriage relationships will not work if you're married to someone who has no character but i have to say this is very general what do you mean by character that's, Somebody that's who's really honest, who, who honors their marital vows, who keeps their word, who doesn't lie, cheat, steal, things that most of us consider basic. If you have, if you're married to somebody who lies to you, it cannot work. It just can't work. Or someone who doesn't fulfill their obligations, who says, I will do this. And then they just don't, you know, uh, yeah. over and over and over. Character is essential to a good relationship but you're basic you have to basically marry to a good guy somebody who is patient who wants to improve you can have a really great woman who is honest and is loving but maybe she's a little lazy i think part of your character too has to do with being a hard worker being dependable being reliable i know it sounds kind of like we're talking about like a car but <laughs> i think i think yeah, you I do want that. Those are, those are all embodied under character. No, none of us are perfect. We can't have no, all, all of us are all, most of us are, and my mother wasn't, but most of us are, are lazy to some degree in some, <laughs> you know, we'd rather, we'd rather sleep in, you know, but these are things that we can work on. But basic character is saying, I, I want to do the right thing. Character is the angelic side. Okay. So character was part of the angelic mm -hmm. side. Okay. So we're essentially talking about that, that side, if we were going to be referring yeah. to her. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. The second one is really big. It's femininity. 
The next one is on the human side, femininity, something that who, who you are. It isn't something you put on and take off. It's, it's who you are and who you are trying to become. It's the way you move, the way you dress, the way you treat people, your attitude about things. Femininity, like I said, so many men have said they can't find a feminine woman. And that by feminine, they don't just mean somebody who wears dresses. They mean somebody who wants to have children who wants to take care of their home, who wants to support their husband, traditional femininity, the way they look, move, act, treat people, the whole thing. It's not something that you are and tomorrow you're not. Yeah, I think so many people think femininity. Okay, great. I need to wear dresses and wear flowers. That's not at all. Um, what we're talking about. Although it could be. It's more about you as a female, your overall kind of radiance and softness. Like when I think of all those things, I think about everything in your book, really. I think it's just studying femininity and celebrating being a woman. And there's so many, there's so much gender fluid nonsense going on right now that that is not attractive. (laughs) It's not attractive to either side. And the reason men want this is partly men, we talked about this before, men are visual. They like to feel like they're, kind of showing their wife off when they go out. Yeah, you don't have to be a supermodel or no. a wife. You just have to be the best version of you as a woman. Have you ever seen a supermodel? Uh, some of them. Some of them look great, but some as they get older, they don't always look like supermodels. And no, no, we don't, all we don't, of them stay married either. Yeah, a lot of them don't stay married. So we live in, in a world where looks change no matter what you do. This is about an attitude and who you are as well as taking care of yourself. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then the third one is understanding men. That is the angelic side again, mm-hmm. which is includes making him number one, accepting him at face value, super important. And, and accepting someone at face value can be very much of a process for many people because you think, what the heck does that mean? It doesn't mean you accept the fact that he throws his wet towels on the floor. It, in other words, that you approve of it, but you accept, oh, he throws his wet towels on the floor, mental note. But your goal isn't to, I've got to change him. Accepting someone at face value is accepting who he is now and not requiring him to change, not actively going about trying to change him. So what does that look like on a, on a regular basis? Can you give an, an example of how you can show him that you understand him? Because there may be women that are watching this that are in the dating world and they're thinking, oh, you know, I want to embrace some of these things for the men that I might be dating. Um, how do I learn to understand him and show him that well part of it is listening to him being interested in what he says admiration that's also included in the book i think this one's tough to explain because especially if you are new to this concept of understanding men well, what do you mean understanding okay. men okay. What as does that you, mean as you date a man get to know a man you can be have sympathy and empathy to what he's saying be interested and getting to know him as a person, empathizing with admiration, accepting at face value. Studying these principles will help you understand masculinity, which will help you understand any man better, not just this particular guy. I think another example uh, of what that can sound like, just to kind of get a, a, an idea, what just your response to topics and subjects out there that are going on not degrading don't say degrading things in general about men i think that's a big part of showing him that you understand men and you know sometimes on uh social media people say because they think it's kind of funny they'll say degrading things about men not specifically but just men in general maybe they don't realize men see that i don't i know how i would feel i do feel if i hear men make degrading comments about women like all women are such and such well it's the same true with men and if you make degrading comments about men oh all men are so stupid that kind of a thing, uh, or toxic masculinity, any of those popular things to say today, it's not like no one is going to notice it. And it affects you, your attitude. We need men. We need good, strong, hero men. Our ability to understand them and promote that to our influence is incredible. We, we don't, women don't understand the power that they have there. They learn this. Not just not participating in those things. I think sometimes even a commercial might come on that's degrading to men and 
you not laughing at it, you not maybe even commenting on it is showing him a lot. You laughing at a joke in a movie about men. Uh, that says something to him that you mm. you participate in that. So I just think you got to be careful. You I, do. You sometimes do. those things can be innocent and funny, but usually they're not. Usually they mean yeah. something. I just think that's real. That's a big one for me, at least. Is like because I feel like I don't know about you, but I'm constantly surrounded by female friends that I just love, but they do this. They they participate in this banter that degrades men, and it's probably innocently innocent intent but it doesn't yeah. come across that way to me and so i just don't participate in it Among- if somebody says something degrading about their husband in front of in front of them i might just not say anything unfortunately in a lot of culture in our culture i'm ashamed to say it's become kind of popular to do that yeah and we we can we can totally not participate in that because i don't like it if it I goes the other way i hate it but you're, I think the point in bringing this up is that you are showing him that you understand men by not joining in on that. So I think that's but incredible. You appreciate, yeah, you appreciate masculinity. Uh, the yeah. fourth one is charm. Charm can help you your entire life. What we mean by charm is your ability to make other people feel good around you. You validate people. And when you're around, people feel accepted, validated. Everybody loves to be around a charming person. Now, some Charming people are disingenuous. First thing that comes to mind is some politicians. I'm sure not all. They learn to be good at being a politician. You have to be good at charm or you, you will never get anywhere. Sometimes it's disingenuous. And disingenuous shows itself in the end. But on personal relationships, charm is so important. I think of an example. Uh, the first person that came to mind was a real person, Jackie Kennedy. She was known to be very charming. She absolutely charmed the Russian president, Khrushchev. He, and that was during the time of the Cold War when there was a lot of tensions between the United States and Russia. She had a way of charming this man. And it wasn't just because she was beautiful, because there have been other beautiful women that didn't charm him at all. But she spoke in this kind of a very feminine, almost a feathery voice. And she wasn't afraid of them, but she just charmed the heck out of him at a state dinner. And there were there are photos of her him looking at her like you can just see the admiration in his eyes. He's just so charmed by her. So you're describing charm as something that is a kind of a feminine influence as well as a good conversationalist, someone that carries themselves well. It's not just about being outgoing and not at all. Not because I'm, I'm not. No, I'm very I'm very introverted and shy. It's helping to make the people you're with comfortable, showing interest in them. Not yeah. just talking about yourself, showing interest in them, looking interested, reflecting back, appreciating them, and making them pe- people feel like they're valuable. Right. Everyone can do that. To say charm is not me is also to say that you're stuck and you can't ever improve, which is not true. Humor. Right, that's a good one. And number five, girlishness. Girlishness is one of my absolute favorites because when we can develop this, and this, this may take a lifetime for some of us. Develop the ability because conflict always happens. No matter how good your marriage is, there'll always be thoughtlessness, grumpiness that enters in from time to time. How you handle that can actually make your relationship even better. For those of you that don't know what that is, if there's a whole chapter in Dixie's book about it, we like to quickly kind of label it as the art of diffusing diffusing tension. tension. It has other parts to it that are, don't have to do with tension, but the main message behind it is you as a woman diffusing tension in a very kind of artful way. And we actually did an entire video on yeah. this subject. So yeah. we won't go into all of the meaning behind it, but watch that video. We can attach it. Yeah, it needs to be a whole book. But. Yeah, it, but that's a big one. And I, I I, think we broke it down in that video as to like all the different tiers of girlishness and how you can work on it. We even have visuals in it. So definitely just watch that one if you want to kind of learn a little bit more about mm-hmm, it. Mm-hmm. And then six is, is boundaries. boundaries. Oh my gosh. No boundaries. one talks about this. Nobody <laughs> talks about no boundaries. No one talks about this. <laughs> boundaries are so important. And ba- by boundaries, we mean it's, a, it's an invisible kind of a line. Like if somebody is trying to get you to do something that you've already stated you don't want to do, they're pushing your boundaries. Red light, red light. I see it. Red brakes first. I have them. Which way? We may be coming to it any minute. Which way? I'm trying to find it. Relight. 
Green light. If you'd stop watching the road and look at the map. Somebody's got to watch the road. That's trampling on your boundaries. It's pushing boundaries is when you trample over them. And some women and some men let the boundaries in their relationships, including their marriage, they get trampled all the time. Fascinating womanhood gets a reputation, especially since it's an older, this fascinating woman had started in an older time in the 60s where things were a little different. So we get a bad reputation for being submissive women that kind of just bow down to the husbands and we're doormats. And I think that's what this is about. Men don't want a woman that is a doormat that just no, says, they don't yes like all the time. Yeah. That's what this is about. Yeah. You can't possibly have this lifelong love affair with a man. If you're a doormat, it doesn't work and, and it never will work. So he has to respect you and love you. And in order for him to respect and love you, you have to have respect for yourself and you have to require that you be treated with respect. And we're not talking about, okay, well, that means you need to be a woman that's really sassy and no, no. spunky. There's, there's times to use a little bit of innocent sass and spunk. I think that's fine, but that's not what this is about. This doesn't mean that you need to suddenly become this person that is kind of in charge of everything. It's more yeah. about that balance of the two of you and the respect, like you said, I think is what I'm taking well, away from today, you. too much sass and spunk is actually sarcastic and sarcasm is not attractive and it's not present in an ideal woman because it's a, a sarcasm is just anger that you're not really honest about up front. It's kind of hinted anger. And this can be hard. There can be moments in your relationship where you may not know what to do and therefore boundaries are crossed because you just don't know what to do. Right. And we all have to work on this. This is, oh, yeah. I'd say yeah. like, Probably 60, 70% of the questions we get, boundaries ends up being a big part of the answer. Sometimes people confuse boundaries with saying, my boundaries is I want him to do this, this, and this. That's not, right. that's not a boundary. That's not, that's not what we're talking. That's demands. That's different than something reasonable where you step over it. You are not showing respect or consideration for the other person. Right. This isn't about the princess mentality. I'm a no, princess. No, no, I have no. to have these things. It's about the respect you keep. I keep going back to that. The respect that you, sh you want for yourself and that you, you might, I don't want to say demand, but like that you expect. Everybody has a bubble. If somebody gets to somebody you just meet gets really close to you and talking to you, everybody has an invisible kind of a boundary where, where they're comfortable with that person being so close to them, and if they get closer, they're uncomfortable. That's pushing your boundaries, and it, you kind of have to feel it. It's not verbalized usually, but if somebody, have you ever had somebody you just met talk to you and they get right in your face? You but then there's also, yeah, out? that's the, the flip side of it is that you have none and that you let everything in and everyone in. I think there's a lot of stories that we get about men that are like that. Mm -hmm. Men that kind of like let everything happen and this can come in or. We'll take six dogs. <laughs> we'll rescue them and bring them in the house. And it's like, you're, you're pushing a boundary. We actually did a video on boundaries as well. There's well, physical we had boundaries, a, we had there's a emotional question. boundaries. We had a question <laughs> the other day that was very unusual. Some, a woman wrote in and said that her, they live in an apartment. Her husband decided to breed pigeons in the apartment. To most women, that's a clear boundary issue. It's a major boundary issue. And as a, a woman following us, maybe perhaps she's thinking, oh, fascinating woman. It is all about understanding men and, you know, the feminine women. Maybe I should just let him do what he wants. No, that's not. <laughs> that's a situation where he that's a boundary is issue. A boundary. Yeah. It's tough. It, all these things are so tough. There's so many complex stories. And, you know, that's why I think this is such a great channel is that we can, you can drop your questions down or you can message us and we can talk about it because everyone has such unique. Well, some women, maybe perhaps that woman felt that she didn't know if she had a right to not want pigeons to be raised in their apartment. I would say 99 out of 100 women would, would see that as a problem. Big one. And then the last one, the seventh one, which is the most fun <laughs> to me. I love this one. Yeah, the domestic goddess. <laughs> Every man wants a domestic goddess and there's different types of dom of domestic goddesses. Not everyone's the same. We're not all going to be these amazing gourmet chefs. We're all not all going to be master decorators. It's more about setting the tone right. for your home. Yeah. It includes cleanliness. It includes order, which is every style of home. 
the way you feel when you come home. Everybody at the end of a day wants to come home. They don't want to sleep at their office. They don't want to put a cot in their place of employment and stay there. They may love their job, but they don't want to live there. Where you live is what women tend to be very good at creating atmosphere, which is includes what you physically look at, but includes smells, attitudes, welcomeness, love, all those things. And those, the creation of atmosphere in your home has to be maintained and recreated almost every day. Women aren't all good at this, but no. I think I think that women do have though an intuition and a sense of you've heard that phrase woman's touch. Yeah. We all have that in us somewhere, whether you know you're perfect at it or you feel like you're just learning about it. Men just are so appreciative of that and crave it and need it. Even if it's just simple, but like don't you we, said, order. Well, don't, don't we all want our men that we love to like being home yeah. instead of wishing they were away? Be human beings have to eat several times a day. <laughs> so if you have to eat, you might as well eat something good. And we've never lived in a time with, where it's as easy as it is now. I'm so amazed at how many amazing recipes there are online. My mother didn't even use all the ingredients that we can commonly cook with now. She never even heard of some of the ingredients that we have that we can cook with. Uh, couscous. I don't think she ever even heard that word. <laughs> yeah. You know, and orzo. She never heard of that. There's so many recipes by great cooks, chefs, who have tons of five star reviews, easy stuff. Most chefs focus on easy recipes and crock pots. My mother didn't have a crock pot. I think when it comes to to all these things, if you're not good at it, you can learn and oh, yeah. it's never too late. And especially if you're single and watching this, this is the time to learn and to practice. And same thing goes with decor. This is the time you can kind of experiment with some of those mm -hmm. things. Honestly, even if your decor is just simple, but you tend to go for softness, inserting different softness, soft touches into your home, mm -hmm. men are going to see that and see peace and sanctuary that you have a, you know, a soft couch to fall onto with soft pillows and soft blankets. Like just trying to kind of think about that sanctuary, I think is just so valuable. A, a beautiful smelling candle or something cooking or something that shows that you care and that you're creating this sanctuary, like you said, and it has to be, you can't, it's not one and done. You have to manage that atmosphere every single day. And it doesn't matter if you live in an old house, an old apartment. I don't, it doesn't really matter if it's a grand home or a small little tiny one. It's that sanctuary and that peace to walk in the door that you can, you can create at. atmosphere in a tent or a cave. Yep. <laughs> it does not depend really seriously. You could, you know, that scene and it's a wonderful life when they get that broken down house with the leaks on their wedding yeah. night and she, he walks in and she has just magically, there's leaks everywhere. And it's just like this windows are broken. There's not even furniture. I don't think or anything. And she somehow managed to put together a dinner. She put up posters of their favorite places to travel. And she just, it was just like magic. It was just so amazing. I think of that scene when I think of domestic goddess, like she was actually able to create a little bit of magic out of nothing, almost nothing. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it just, you can see it in that scene, his face, just, he felt so loved and so special. Yeah. Like, wow, I really married a prize that she did this for me. And because women, we are, have the advantage of being so relationship oriented and so multitasking, we can be really good at this. And that's why we're talking to women about this. Yeah. And none of us are perfect. I mean, we talk about the ideal woman and it's like, well... We're just saying ideal. We're not saying perfect. We're just saying. Yeah. Don't, yeah, don't look to any of us to be this magical, <laughs> ideal person. It's like the picture of the, 
person you put on your fridge and say, I'm going to try and look like that, even they may not look as good as that if there's airbrushing going on, but it's a goal to shoot for. And yeah. if you shoot for it, you'll be, you'll go more towards it than you would if you don't have a goal at all. Right. And I love that we were able to kind of break down some of these things. There's so many more. Uh, these are just some of the top ones. And I think we've done videos on almost every single one. If you want to learn more, you should definitely check out some of our other videos that we've done where we've really gone through these subjects and kind of break, broken it down even more. Okay. Well, thank you so much for being here today to go over all these things with us. This has been so valuable. And I hope everyone out there, if you have any questions or comments or anything that you'd like to add, add those down below. I think all you ladies are so amazing. We are so impressed by the questions that you ask, the success stories you tell us. You're an inspiration to us as well. Yes, especially some of you ladies that are here with us every single week and comment on our videos every single week. You are the greatest. We're doing this for you. So if you haven't read Dixie's book, Fascinating Womanhood for the Timeless Women, definitely check the links down below. We have several different books. We also have a companion workbook that goes along with Timeless that will help you to That's right. advance your studies even more. And if you like our channel, we would love your support by subscribing and pressing like on our videos. It really helps us grow. And we're here every week. So definitely check back with us next time. And we'll see you then. See you Bye. then. Bye-bye.